thank you for streaming live with the Destiny House Christian Center of Freeport, New York. Although we are in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, it does not mean that you cannot connect with us. We invite you to visit our website at www.dhcc.church and follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram at Destiny House Christian Center. Also on Twitter and YouTube at Destiny House CC. Please pay attention to this week's announcements. Beloved, the sanctuary at DHCC is officially open for our worship services, and we invite you to worship with us in person if you're in the Freeport area. Visit us at 70 North Main Street in Freeport, New York every Sunday at 9 a.m. Please note, we will be adhering to the current guidance from the CDC regarding all COVID-19 protocols. We will be live streaming on Facebook Live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You do not need a Facebook page to view our live stream. Simply type in and click our Facebook link at www.facebook.com forward slash Destiny House Christian Center to view us. Otherwise, you may catch us on our YouTube channel on Sundays at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Destiny House CC. Please like, share, and follow us. The theme of the month at DHCC is Replenish as contextualized in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, which reads, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Word Up Inspirations will broadcast on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., offering a moment of inspiration to get your day started right. Do you need prayer? Contact our pastoral care team by sending your request to prayer at dhcc.church or submit your prayer request on our website at www.dhcc.church. Please be sure to check out our October newsletter entitled Destiny Speaks on our website at www.dhcc.church. DHCC invites you to join us every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. for our Wednesday night worship, one hour of power prayer service. You are all invited to join us in worship, prayer, and praise. Don't miss your opportunity to experience and enjoy the presence of God. All are welcome. Proverbs 27 and 17 reads, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Please join the Men of Destiny for our monthly session of Keeping It Real, where seasoned men of God help the brotherhood become priests, husbands, fathers, leaders, and kingdom servants as God intended every first Monday of the month at 7.30 p.m. Real Men Talk with M.O.D. DHCC's Women of Destiny invites all women to their monthly virtual meeting every first Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. For further details, please email wod at dhcc.church. Happy birthday to DHCC's own Brother Jason Smith Jr., Elder Francis Dent, Lady Jewel Jones Freeman, Lady Venus Sharp, Mother Faye Chambers, Master Ellis Smith, and to all those celebrating their birthday during the month of October, happy birthday to each and every one of you. Happy anniversary to all those celebrating their wedding anniversary during the month of October. Happy anniversary to you and many, many more. October is National Clergy Appreciation Month every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. for our appreciation day. This month, our prayer service. You are all invited to join us in worship, prayer, and praise. Don't miss your opportunity to experience and enjoy the presence of God. All are welcome. 
Proverbs 27 verse 17 in the NIV reads, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Please join the Men of Destiny for our monthly session of Keeping It Real, where seasoned men of God help the brotherhood become priests, husbands, fathers, leaders, and kingdom servants as God intended every first Monday of the month at 7.30 p.m. For further details, please email mod at dhcc.church. Real men keep it real with MOD. DHCC's Women of Destiny invites all women to their monthly virtual meeting every first Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. For further details, please email wod at dhcc.church. Happy birthday to DHCC's own Deacon-elect Michael Anderson, Lady Shelby Haywood, Brother... Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We're so grateful to be here on this Sunday morning to give God all glory, to give God all the honor, and to give him all praise. Come on, let's just take the next 30 seconds and give the Lord a worthy praise. For the Lord is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same the name of the lord is worthy hallelujah come on open your mouth and bless him come on we give him glory this morning oh god we thank you we bless your holy and your righteous name father we come to say thank you hallelujah we come to do damage in the kingdom of darkness and tell the devil that he has no power and god we thank you for bringing us to the third Sunday of this new year. Come on, Zion, open your mouth and praise him. Hallelujah, the Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you this morning. I want to bring your attention to the 66th Psalm. And then we're going to go into prayer. Psalm 66, verses 8 through 12. Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praises be heard which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. For thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou hast brought us into the net. Thou hast laid affliction upon our loins. Thou hast casted men to ride over our heads. I, I want you to repeat this with me. We went through the fire and through water but thou hast brought of us into a wealthy place. I dare you to just tell somebody, I've been through so much, but God is getting ready to take me to something greater. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Echo, shut out of Oh, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. I said, I've been through so much. When you almost face death, when COVID was going through your body, when cancer was messing with your body, when you were almost homeless, when you were sleeping in the streets and in your car, couldn't have no food, the Lord has taken you through the fire and through the flood, broken you into pieces, left you all alone. But tell somebody, I've been kept, I've been blessed, and now I'm going into a wealthy place. Somebody give the Lord a hand, praise, and tell him thank you. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Woo. Thank you. Father, we thank you on this morning. We ask that you have the way in this place that your will be done. Let somebody be saved. Let somebody be healed. Let somebody be delivered. Let somebody be set free. Father, we ask that you have your way in this place. Father God, we ask that, hallelujah, somebody will be saved, healed, delivered, and set free. Father God, we ask that you will move in this service. Let your weight be thrown around. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you will bless our speaker on this morning. Elder Francis said that, Father God, as she brings Lama on from heaven, that, Father, it will feed your people, that it will be manna from heaven, that, God, this will be fresh word. Oh God, hallelujah, as we go into this new year, 
Father God, we know that this is the first quarter. This is the first season. And God, we give you glory. Now, Father, we ask that you bless our summit. Father God, we ask that you will speak through her. Hallelujah. Through the ministry of song. That Father God, you'll cover her. That Father God, you'll protect her from any of the devil's art. Oh God, we thank you. We ask that you will evangelize in this place. We ask for your prophetic move. We ask for your apostolic move. Oh God, to take control in this place on this morning. God, we thank you for our senior leader, Apostle Dr. Pepper Martin. That Father God, you'll continue to bless her. You'll continue to keep her. You'll continue to guide her. You'll continue to aid her. You'll continue to protect her. Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. We come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever attacks you may try to bring to the senior leader of this house. Father, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Other the leaders have brought on the glory, but we thank you that our leader is still here. We thank you that she's still holding on. We thank you even through all her affliction, even through all her heartache, even through all her pain. Father, she still gets up and she prays for your people. She still preaches your word. And we thank you on this morning. Oh God, we give the glory for her husband, Pastor Sidney. Continue to bless his body. Continue to cover him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the Destiny House Christian Center. The Father will continue to cover this church right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Every member, every laity, everybody that's here, under the sound of my voice, may it be in the physical church, may it be in the virtual church. Father, we ask, oh God, that you'll cover this church. Father, we've been through fire, we've been through flood, but God, we know you're bringing us into a wealthy place. Hallelujah! Into a place where there's no more worry into a place oh god we thank you that you're still god we thank you that even though everything that's going on in the world we're in a world of uncertainty we don't know what's going on but god we still know that you're in control you're still alpha you're still omega you're still the first and the last the beginning oh god in the end and we tell you thank you 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 hey glory 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 Woo! hallelujah Woo! come on and give him glory oh god we thank you glory glory come on open your mouth zion hallelujah i dare you to begin to praise him take the next few moments this is what prayer is about begin to worship him God, we thank you. We give you glory. Oh, God, we want to give you glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. 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 At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue must confess Jesus. He's Lord. I said 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 he's Lord. Hey, glory. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, oh, glory, 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 glory. Hey, God, we thank you. We give you glory. After a rough week, after a hard week, all you can come and do is come in this house and give him glory. Hey. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 Hey. Oh, hallelujah. And Father, we won't fail to give you praise. Father, I ask that whatever we missed in this prayer, that Father God, you'll cover it. And we seal this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. Yes, God. Glory. We've been through the fire and the flood. But tell somebody I'm going into a wealthy place.
Hey, glory. Tell somebody I'm going into a wealthy place. Father God, have your way in this place. Move like never before. In Jesus' name. We're going to do something a little unorthodox this morning. Hallelujah. I want to do a congregational song. It's not a hymn, but it's a song. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on, Zion. Bless the Lord with me. Come on. Bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. to release my testimony and let everybody know what tithing has done 
for me and what prayer has done for me. A couple years ago, um, I was going through a rough, a rough, rough patch. And um, during that time, it was very, very stressful for me. I was sick nonstop, headaches to the point where I would end up with a minor seizure, um, lupus flare-ups like there were no tomorrow. And um, starting with the church I used to go to, I didn't know what tithing meant. Um, it was always, any church I went to, it was, you know, greed, and it, you, you can see it. It was a lot of greed. It was a lot of you have to tithe or you'll go to hell or you, you're a demon child and things like that. And that's what I grew up on. And um, so I didn't tithe. I was just like, okay, it is what it is. And, you know, I wanted to deep down in my heart, but I was just like, I'm not giving nobody my money. <laughs> you know, like you make a certain amount and it's just like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> just to be truthful, you know. Um, but, you know, and I've d I did that for many years. Um, and as I was doing that, knowing that, me personally, I know I truly wanted to tithe, but knowing that, you know, it was so much going on, I was just like, nah, I'm not doing that in this church. No, I'm not gonna do that in that church either. Um, with me doing that, I wasn't, I still wasn't being obedient to what my heart was telling me I was supposed to do. But because of the, the people I was around in the church I was in at the time, I just was like, no. And um, I didn't have a car. At the age of, I would say, 26. And I had just gotten my license very late, but I got it. And um, things just wasn't going right. Left and right, you know, um, had problems in my family nonstop. Um, like I said, I was sick repeatedly. went on, um, I decided to move out of where I was living, and I was literally living from pillow to post. And um, some people will say that they're your friends and they'll help you out. And when you actually go, they're like, oh, you know, whatever you need, I got you. And I took that in because I was vulnerable and I was yearning for people to love who I was and to love me and to help me out because everything I was going through and in the middle of that, they'll want something, like, okay, do my hair, can you take me here, can you take me there? And I'm just like, ah, I don't know what to do, because I, I didn't have a car. Um, I had a kid, you know, at a very early age, and it was difficult for me. But um, I still kept going to church, singing, and I was singing while I was severely, severely bleeding. So when you do that, you're singing to others, and you think that you're breaking yokes, but you're not. You're keeping them hard-boiled. And um, I kept doing that for many years. And as time went on, I kept going from pillar to post, but I always made sure that my child was protected, no matter what. I never saw her, I never let her see me sweat, I'll say that. And um, I let her go with her dad's family, and I would suffer because I didn't want her to suffer the way that I was suffering. And I'm going somewhere with this, but you know, through all those times, I still went to church, but I did not tithe. Then when I kept getting bashed for it, I said, okay, well, I guess I'll give an offering. I'll give a dollar or two, and I'll have money in my pocket, but I was just like, here you go. You know, you're not going to take my money and use it for what you want to use it for. And um, I still didn't learn anything. I still didn't, you know, I knew what tithing was, but not to the depth of what tithing can do for me. And... I started coming here, and I would say, actually, when Destiny House opened, I've been here, <laughs> um, in and out, in and out, and being here, when you step through the door, I'm pretty sure everybody can attest to that, you can feel the love, you can feel the difference when you come here, and I'm not only saying that because I'm a member, I'm saying that because from a broken person, severely broken, severely depressed, severely to the point where, you know, I had suicidal thoughts, and um, I tried taking my life. I did, a couple times. And um, God said, no. I took things that you wouldn't even think I would take, and I really tried to take my life about two, three times, and it honestly didn't work. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I didn't want to deal with anybody anymore. I was just like, it is what it is. But 
apostle called me one night and she told me and she said, you need to come to church. And I was just like, mm -hmm, no, <laughs> she told me to come to prayer, actually. Correction. And we had prayer on Wednesday nights and I told her no. I think that was the first time I've ever told her no. <laughs> and the last time I've ever told her no. <laughs> uh, God is good all the time, though. But anyway, quickly, I told her no, and I, um, I didn't come. And she kept calling me, kept calling me. And um, I ended up coming, and it was such a release. It was, it was amazing. And I tried to take my life that day until she called me. And... Um, Fast forwarding, um, I started coming here more. I started seeing everybody tithe and all that. I was just like, hmm, I guess tithing is a thing here, you know. And um, I started tithing little by little, but I didn't tithe as much as I was tithing now. I started tithing more in, I would say, the peak of COVID or a little bit before that. And um, I was sleeping in my car before that, and nobody knew. I was sleeping in my car, um, and I went to Thanksgiving at Apostle and um, Pastor Sydney's house. They didn't know I was sleeping in my car, but you know Apostle, she can tell when something's wrong. <laughs> and you can't lie to her and say there's nothing wrong. And I thought I was getting away with it, but I couldn't because my car was so packed with clothes and, and blankets and everything, I couldn't really tell her no. Um, and um, they found out I was sleeping in my car. And um, thank God that they're the type of people that didn't judge. But I was so traumatized from jumping from pillow to post, I didn't want to say anything to them. They didn't judge me. You know, my car honestly looked a mess. and I'm <laughs> It really did. And I had no choice because I had to put the car seat back and put blankets over. And it was freezing cold. It was November. November. And it was cold. And... Um, they found out, they was like, listen, you could stay here and whatever. Immediately, when people say that to me, I kind of step back and I put a wall back up and I'm just like, here we go again. Even with them, knowing that they are loving, 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 loving per people, I still stood back and I was just like, no, I don't, you know, it's great, thank you, but <laughs> I'll stay here one night and that's it, I'll leave, <laughs> no problem. The next morning, um, they were like, we're going to help you out. And I honestly still didn't believe them, honestly. I still kept my clothes in the car, and I, I locked myself away, and I was just like, nah, you know, <laughs> no, I don't think they're going to help me. But they helped me with a lot, my mental and everything like that. So I praise God for Apostle and, and Pastor Sydney for helping me out through a rough, rough, rough time. Fast forwarding, um, I started tithing once I found out what tithing really meant. And the thing here is that being at DACC, they teach you, not only preach to you, but they teach you as well. And when we had that church meeting of where our tithes were going, that's what made me was like, this is truthful. It's not going to anybody else but this church. And it gave me closure because I was just like, I know where my money is going. Because I tithe, I listened to God. God told me to sow a certain amount, and I did. She called me and she said, Sherry, what are you doing? <laughs> you're trying to save. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're trying to do. I was like, this is what God has told me to sow. And I did. I tithed every week. Then God told me to switch. He told me to tithe lower. He told me to tithe, okay, sow this amount. And I did. The more I did, the more I was working per diem at the time. And I was working at Stony Brook. And she told me to quit. And I was just like, how do you expect me to make money? and quit this job. <laughs> I was working 11 p.m. to 7 in the morning, leave there, go home, go to um, North White Health from 7 to 3 or 3 to whatever time. I was literally killing myself slowly but surely. She told me to quit. I told her no. <laughs> She's like, you're going to quit now. I said, okay, no problem. I quit, and I didn't know how to do it. I had to get rid of my car. That was 400 and something dollars, almost 900 and something dollars coming out of my pocket that I did not have. And I was like, how am I getting from point A to point B? And, you know, my license wasn't good. Everything was just in shambles. And I kept acting, ask, asking Pastor Sydney, well, how do you expect me to get to my job? How do you expect me to get here? She's like, don't worry about it. And in my head, I worry so, I used to worry so much. And 
got my license fixed with the help of Pastor Sydney. And um, he's like, you can use the van until you get what you need. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then he was like, here you go. I'm just like, really? You're going to let me use it? And not knowing that it was blessing starting because I tithed, I was just like, okay, great. The next thing that happened was um, I tithed so much and I was being consistent with my tithing. I um, saved up enough money to the point where I had a savings account. And I would say it was $10,000 in my savings account. I had never had that much money in my savings account. And I'm not ashamed to say that I had it. And every time I looked at it, I was like, look, Pastor Cindy, look, I got money in my bank account. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm still like, how is this possible? Not knowing that God was blessing me every single day because I tithed. And after that, um, I ended up getting a part-time position at Northwell. I started singing out Northwell out of nowhere. And I'm just like, what is going on? I'm like, I'm singing at Northwell. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And then he'll just give the same look. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it won't say one word. And I'm just like, all right, okay. Um, kept tithing. I kept being obedient. I kept tithing. And then I would say July of 2020. July of 2020. Apostle said before that she said, I'm going to give you nine months. Nine months, as every woman know and male know, that's birth in season. Literally nine months, the ninth month I, of me living there, I ended up getting a car, and I paid for it in full. It was amazing because I was just like, I can pay for it and still have money in my pocket. No car, no, just insurance. So I got that. And I say, thank you, God, for getting me a car so I'll be able to go where I need to go and get where I need to go. <laughs> Riding on the word of God. <laughs> so then, after that, not too long ago, I would say two weeks, we was looking for apartments. And I was just like, oh, this is hard. Everybody know if you're looking for a house, apartment is difficult. But I met Pastor Sydney and Apostle at this apartment. And they both went in. I went in. The landlord, you know, she, she's very a God-fearing woman she is. Um, it was a little rough patch, but it was great. <laughs> um, but it was an apostle and a pastor that stood on a place. And when apostle and a pastor, they stand in a building or on a platform, and you pray on that platform or on that, that, that house or wherever, it's going to be manifested to whoever it's going to go to. And I can honestly say, not even five minutes or ten minutes later, she called me. She said, this is yours. I paid the broker fee. I paid my first month's rent, and I paid my last month's rent. And I still had money left over. <laughs> and I can honestly say that was nothing but God. And... She said, you got to buy your pots, you got to buy your pans, you got to buy, and I'm just like, uh, no, I'm like, I don't want to do that. And I'm just like, I'm trying to save my money. She goes, you need that. So I did. And I've been there for almost two years. And continuing to tithe and everything like that, yeah, you have some rough patches where you can't tithe or something, things happen or whatever the case may be. But as long as you still have faith and you put your trust in God, God will literally make a way somehow. And I never understood it until I got older, that God will truly make a way somehow. And he honestly did for me. But going through what I went through before, I've been through molestation, sexual abuse, I've been through rape, I've been through um, physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse from, I would say, foster care all the way until now but I've overcame that and I can honestly say there's so much weight lifted off I smile more I'm more confident within myself I sing differently and I've noticed that in myself and I'm telling this testimony because tithing is important especially to the millennials to the young people when you tithe even if it's five dollars or whatever the case may be tithe 
Because when it, go, when it goes back into God, it will manifest whether you believe it or not. When you're like, yo, how did I get this in my pocket? How did I get that? I got unexpected checks that I didn't even know where it came from. And when I still kept getting mail where I was living before, Sherry, you got mail. Okay. I'm thinking it's just like, you know, bills, whatever. I would open it. It was a $500 check. It was a $2,000 check for my student loans that I gave. And I'm just like, how is this possible? And it's possible because when you tithe, God gives it back to you. And it's overflowing. And I can honestly say there were times I didn't even have money. But my bills were paid. Everything was paid in full. I, I would look at my bank account and like, Okay, I got money in my bank account. How? You work so hard and everything goes to bills. But when you continue to tithe, no matter how hard you work and you don't have money in your bank account, God will always make a way. So I wanted to tell this testimony to uplift somebody and give, give encouragement that your, your money is not going to waste. It's really honestly not. You know, the clothing drives that we have and everything that we have – we, we can go and get it ourselves. We get food, we get clothes, we get everything. And it's like, don't be ashamed to be like, ooh, what's in those bags? Ooh, what's, I do it. I don't have no shame. Because at the end of the day, when we have those things, it blesses us as well as other people in the streets. So tithe. Continue to tithe. Don't be ashamed. Even if it's a dollar, don't be ashamed what you tithe. It's still tithing because you're still sowing back into what God has given you. So I just wanted to tell my testimony going from being homeless in my car to having an apartment, a car in a two-week span, and to honestly say I've been living there for almost two years, and I just got a full-time offer at my job as an admitting clerk working overnight, as well as I got cleared for a correctional officer position. So when I tell you God can do anything, and if you be consistent in your ties and your prayers, God will do anything. God will continue to bless you whether you know it or not. I don't cry no more. I don't shed tears. If I do shed tears, it's tears of joy. It's tears of happiness. It's nothing broken in here. I can honestly say there's nothing broken in here. Everything that was broken on the inside is stitched up. And it won't be busted. I will not have any busted stitches on the inside. Because as long as you have that, you'll remain broken and you wouldn't know how to sew those up. But the key to sewing up the stitches that is on the inside is continuing to fast, continuing to pray, continuing to tithe, and continuing to be consistent. Because honestly, like I said on my live yesterday, this is a season of release to change. And if you can't change, and if you don't wanna change, you're gonna be stuck in neutral for the rest of your life. So in order for you to drive, you have to change first in order for you to drive. So I just wanted to say that and encourage somebody to continue tithing no matter what. So we're gonna sing one song for praise and worship. <laughs> I'm sorry, Elder Den. We're going to sing one song for praise and worship. It's called, Come On in the Room. Jesus is my doctor, and he writes out all my prescriptions, and he gives me all of my medicine in the prayer room. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to go back a little bit. You know, hand clapping, toes stomping, a little banjo in there. All right, all right. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together like this. Come 
Lord, I need you to help me on my way. Lord, I need you to help me on my journey. Lord, I need you to help me on my way. Lord, I need you to help me on my journey. Lord, I need you to help me on my way. Lord, I need you to help me on my journey. Lord, I need you to help me on my way. Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need you to help. 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 Lord, I need you to help.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. Glory to be in the house of the sanctuary once again. And mm, thank you. Mm. Y'all don't know. Mm. Sometimes you don't know what go people go through during the week. You got to call on somebody that you know that's able to help you to get out of your situation. So sometimes you can't even call on Jesus your own self. But as long as you got those that can call on Jesus. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Dr. Pepper Martin, as she has entered the sanctuary, we're thankful for her to be here this morning. And we're thankful for Pastor Sidney Martin. We're thankful for our prophet of the house, Joseph Brown, and to our officiator, Brother Christian, who just know God from the bottom of his heart. I saw he was officiating, I said, Lord Jesus. He gonna bring it in. Had to step it up, Christian. I'm just saying, you just you on time. That's it. God has given that to you from before you was even born. But thank God for being here into social media and everybody in the rightful places. Address you in the name of our Father Jesus Christ. And I thank God for being here. But I got to get to the scripture because I have a hard week. But I thank God for being here. I thank God for being here. Because I didn't know who I was on Wednesday and Thursday. I didn't know who my, my name was on Wednesday and Thursday. With none but the devil. But God prevailed. He showed up on time. So while I'm talking, get your Bibles ready. I'm going straight to the scripture. And we're going to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and the 5th verse. It's a very familiar scripture that we know of. But once you break it down, it's entirely different. It'll mean something to you when you study it. I'm coming from a different direction this morning. So in Isaiah, the 53rd third chapter, the fifth verse, and it's from the King James Version. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. One verse, but very, it's very, uh, it's very important and it has a lot to say in our Christian lives. So this morning, you may be seated in the sanctuary. We thank God for being this morning. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless the word that you have given to me. Father, I know that you are in charge of this word and this service today, and I thank you for showing up for us, God. Amen. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You show up every Sunday at Destiny House Christian Center. 
You do. And I thank God for it, and I don't take it for advantage. I know when I come into the house of the Lord that you're going to be here. And I bring you in here with me, too. So I thank you, Heavenly Father, for another opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. Thank you, my apostle, for another opportunity to bring the word. So bless the word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in this scripture this morning, he was wounded for our transgressions and the chastisement. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I said, my subject this morning was, what if Jesus said no to the Father? What if Jesus said no and, and, and to the Father, to God, you know, when he's doing it, he's coming down here. So in the beginning, you know, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and he had no say so in that, I don't think. But I'm just, just, I just stretch my mind a little bit and ask you to stretch your minds today. Just, you know, he came down, yeah, I'll go down there, be born of a virgin, yeah. You know, and be blessed down there and have a nice childhood and, and have nice things. That's fine with me. I'll go down there. And just just go down along that track with me for a minute. And he said, yeah, I'll go down there. But as we see that he was born of the virgin and he was born without sin. And there's no, uh, his, I didn't find any history if I am, then my apostle let me know between the age of 12 and 30, there was not too much written about Jesus. I didn't see anything in, in the Bible that anything that happened between 12 and 30. So maybe he was getting his teenage years on, you know, learning from his uh, physical father how to take care of his family because, you know, in those days, the male child, if anything happened to the father, the male child took over to make sure that the family, especially the mother, was taken care of. So um, at this age of 12, he's a Jewish boy, and he became the son of the law of a ser or a servant. That was the Jewish custom. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. They went a number of days to get there, and they stayed a number of days and a number of days to get back. On their way back, they lost their son. Well, they lost him. Imagine if you lost your son, your, your daughter, your child, how you would feel. They had to go back and retrieve the young man who was up in the temple uh, teaching to the elders at the age of 12. Unbelievable. I wish my child did go find somewhere at age 12, and I didn't know where he was at without my permission. But that was his journey. That was his um, assignment. So, so at age of 30, you don't hear anything else until the age of 30. And that's when he began his ministry. So Jesus agreed to go down and save the people after generations of disobedience, after so many prophets and and kings and, and um, people that God sent down to uh, have the people repent. They did it over and over again, got in captivity in Babylon, and they were all over there. And every time they got out of something, they got back into it. Clockwork, they got out of something, they got back into it. Over and over and over again. So in this segment, I'm trying to bring to your attention, there are five major milestones in the life of Jesus. I didn't add, I, I, I decided to talk about the, the birth, but the five milestones is like um, the milestones are a significant event or stage in the life of progress, development, or the like of a person or a nation. So it was five milestones that he had going on. Those were baptism, transfiguration, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. So the first milestone was that the father needed Jesus to be baptized by John the Baptist. That was already ordained in the Bible. John the Baptist was preaching, repent, be baptized, everyone, and forgiveness of sin. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, no one else but John. John said, this is, God said, this is my, after he got baptized, 
God said, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. And immediately into the wilderness he went for 40 days and 40 nights, tempted by the devil three times. What if Jesus had failed and said, no, I'm not going into no wilderness. All those creatures and animals and things up in there, darkness, ain't no light, ain't no, ain't no food. Might have been some water, but I'm not going up into the wilderness, but he did. So the scripture says in Matthew 3.15, it says, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And he was tempted. Man shall not live by bread alone, but our every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It is written that they shall not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, he was tempted. And, and God had, and Jesus had to tell him, get, get hence behind me, Satan. It is written, thou shalt not worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Perfect example had to be set for the people to follow. Angels ministered to him, and then right after he returned, after he, re after he was ministered in the wilderness for the 40 days, you figure uh, he would be like on a vacation. But he couldn't go on vacation. It was time for him to start ministering. His ministry had to begin. Now he's ready to do what he needs to do. And I thought about that. All the time he was here, 30, 33 years old, crucified, the amount of work he did in that short of time. And here we are, supposed to be Christians, and we're like 18, 19, 20, we get, and all of a sudden you're 40, 50, 60, and you're still in the same spot. Right. Something's wrong. So it, it wasn't time for a vacation, holiday, and a sick day. He couldn't take off. It was time for him to get to work. So the second milestone was a transfiguration. It, it's a sign that Jesus was to fulfill the law. Moses and the prophet, e prophets, but it was Elijah. What if he had said no? How would Moses and Elijah be looked at? When they've been preaching and talking about this, how would they look if, if, if they hadn't had the experience? It also assures James Peter and John, that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. The transfiguration of Jesus promises a glorious future and therefore free us up to focus on God's interests rather than our own. It teaches us about Christ's authority and glory as well as the transformation, transformation we should go through as his followers. Jesus reveals God's kingdom. Jesus' job, his assignment, was to fulfill the law of, of the prophets and reveal that he is the Messiah. In 2 Peter, first, in 2 Peter the first chapter, the 16th verse to the 18th, it says, we weren't, you know, just wishing on a star when we lay the facts out before you're regarding the powerful return of our master, Jesus Christ. We were there for the preview. We saw it with our own eyes. Jesus, splendid, dazzling, the light, appearance, glory, the light from God, the Father as the voice of majestic. Glory spoke when they were there. This is my son, marked by my love. This is what God's telling Elijah and Moses. He said, "That's they were the witnesses, so if Jesus hadn't been obedient, then Moses and Elijah wouldn't have been able to witness this. Amen? So we were there on the, he's, Elijah and, and, and Moses, we were there on the mountaintop. We were on the holy mountain with him. We heard the voice out of heaven with our own ears. We seen with our own eyes. What if Jesus had failed? What if Jesus had said no to the Father? So even though we want to stay on the mountaintop, every time we have a, a mountaintop experience, especially in GHCC, it, we, I don't want to go home. I don't want to face the bills. I don't want to face the car note. I don't want to face taking a bath. Or I don't want to have to go and find something to eat. I want to stay and eat 
story <laughs> all day, but we know we can't stay there. We have to come down. My issue is, when you come down, who are you? Is there a change? Is there a change in your attitude? Is there a change in your behavior? You go up a wet and dirty demon, and you're coming down the same way? People are really weird these days. I'm going through some stuff, and I'm going to say it on Facebook. I don't care what they say with family. And, and I say, you know, and then I'm like, then I find out other people are going through stuff with family. I didn't think, I thought I was exempt. I thought I was exempt. I didn't think our family was like this. Yes. Let's all join together. I didn't think that family act like this. Really, I did not think it was like that. Shocking to me. Shocking. Amen, Brother Tim. So when you come down from the mountaintop experience, you have a promise to God. And that's to a change has to occur on your behavior, your attitude. You got to have a change. If not, something's wrong. The crucifixion was a method of capital punishment in which the victim is bind or nailed. So we went from, uh, you know, from the baptism, you know, and we went to the transfiguration, and then now we're going over to the crucifixion because these are milestones that Jesus had to do in order to fulfill the scriptures. So what if he had said no? So now it's time for the, and I, I don't want to put any light on any light on any one of them because all of them were very important. But this crucifixion was off the chain, nailed to a cross. You know, punished, beat. He 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 was left for dead. That that's the that's the definition of it. I wonder if he wanted to cop out for this one. They say no. Look, Father. I did all you said do, but I can't go no further. Because this one here is a, is, is a critical one. This one here is going to kill me. He said, I've done nothing wrong. I don't deserve this punishment. But the scriptures, the scriptures had to be fulfilled. Christian, it had to be fulfilled. It was already written already in the Old Testament that this was going to happen. So, but I'm just saying on a physical note, I wonder if he wanted to say no. He was tried and sentenced to a horrible death, beaten, spit on, whipped, humiliated, tortured, an innocent man. Now imagine if he wanted to get out of that and sneak out late at night and say, I ain't coming back. Somebody else going to take this one. Hanging on the cross with nails in his hands and his feet. Yeah, you're right, brother said, pastor said, but if he had failed, he would, if he had failed, where would we be? I'm going somewhere, okay? So he was, he was being tortured. He knew what the end results will be. He remained obedient. And Isaiah 53 and 5, he said, he was, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with, by his stripes, we are healed. Heal from abusiveness, heal from mental illness, heal from diseases, heal from emotional distress, heal from family, heal from friends, heal from all of that. I'm telling it because it's the truth. If I'm a lie, you go talk to God about it because I'm telling the truth. You, you, you heal from generation of curses. Heal from uh, men just touching on you when you're a little kid. They have no respect for you. Fathers and brothers are supposed to protect you, us women. And you treat us like dirt. And then they come up just rap music and they call us all kind of names out ourselves. I wish you would come in my direction. So you heal from all that stuff. Heal, this, heal me from not cutting you up, prophet. Heal me from, heal me from it. 
Because thank God I ain't where I used to be. I used to be, everybody would have been cut out. I don't do the things I don't do anymore. And I thank God for saving me. My husband met me when I was saved. Because John, no. Don't close that eye. Help me, Jesus. John, know I got to play with him. <laughs> but he know. He said, look, that one's a rough one. She'll do all she can do for you. She'll take you to the water. She'll, she'll help you out. She'll do for you. She'll love you. She'll take care of you. But don't cross her. Don't cross me. Don't cross me. Don't cross me. So, so the resurrection was the action of a fact of being resurrected from the dead. Now we're on the resurrection. Because he they already killed them now. Set him up for it. He wanted to cop out. I'm telling you right now. It was me, I would have copped out. You ain't sticking no nails in my hands and feet. Crown me sitting on the cross all day long to 3 o'clock. Listen, I know no bones was broken on the cross. But, you know, they said, no, God did that so he wouldn't, you know, his body suffered anymore. But his bones, not a bone was uh, broken. So 3 o'clock, it was over for him. Now it's time for the resurrection. So, so now the resurrection, when Jesus rises from the dead after three days in the tomb, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Jesus didn't say no. The resurrection supplies us with hope and victory over death. The Bible says that those who believe in Christ will rise from the dead and never die again in Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. When he called Lazarus, he didn't say, God didn't get up and say, come forth. You imagine if he said, come forth to this, everybody would have been up out of the grave. All kind of demons and, and, and murderers and hookers and all kind of uh, um, uh, uh, all kind of people, they didn't need to be coming forth. But he had specifically had to call Lazarus to come forth, to tell Lazarus, Lazarus, listen, too. He came forth. I think I would have came forth, too, after being dead for three days. He listened to God. Jesus had to be specific in what he was saying. He was obedient, but he was excellent in what he did. He showed an example he came on down here and took on a human body to let us know he knows how, he'll know how we feel in the situation. So he'll know how the mercy, the grace and the mercy upon us because he know that we are with sin. He was without. So he did. So the, uh, the fifth milestone is the ascension. He departed from earth by rising into heaven in the presence of 11 of his apostles. 40 days after the resurrection, in Acts 1st chapter 9 verse, it says that he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. He has rejoined God the Father at the right hand. Jesus was telling people that he had already taken on mankind's sins, and he had completed his work of redemption. Redemption, the action of saving or being saved from sin or evil, God's plan for the redemption of his world. He was an excellent example, but he could have said no. He said, I'm still alive. I still exist. Today I live forever. I stand in front of you so that you can see and touch me and know that I'm real, that it was true that I got up out the grave and I rose. And now I sit the Father, I sit the right hand of the Father, and you have a way to talk to me, to bring the people back to God again. Because the first Adam failed. Now the second Adam came and did exactly what God wanted him to do. But he had to go through all of this. He could have said no, but he didn't. What if he had failed and said no? The scriptures had to be fulfilled. Jesus was completely obedient. If he had disobeyed, this world would be in a total chaos. It's already in the chaos as it is. We would be lost forever. We needed someone to save us. We needed someone who loved us. We needed someone to care about us. We needed a God that can do all things but fail. We need God to come and see about us. True. Tell God 
to come and see about me. Everybody in the comments box, write down, God, come see about me. Thank him for showing us forgiveness. And thank him for shedding his blood. We thank him for giving us life. We thank him for dying on the cross. We thank him for his humility. And we thank him for his obedience. We thank him for setting us free. We thank him for the release of the Holy Spirit. We thank him for, for, for just being God all by himself. We thank him for the shift. We thank him for the release of this new year. We thank him for the ark of safety. And if you're in GACC, you're in the ark of safety. My God, give him glory this morning. Thank him for being uh, our neighbor and thank him for him feeding us and thank him for being the God that he did. The resurrection, the resurrection completed the work. Today's saints, what if Jesus had failed? If Jesus had taken that line and disobeyed the Father, Jesus could no longer say, I and the Father are one. Jesus had always obeyed his Father, even unto death, even death on the cross. How can we stop failing God? How can we continue to disobey God? How can we be on God's side and obey him? We must control our mind rather than let it control us. We must submit your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship, committing yourself to God. We must repent of our sins daily. If you're willing, it's an inward attitude. If you're willing, it's an outward action. Only then we can enjoy, enjoy the blessings that he has given to us. We are taught by an excellent example. Our apostle teaches us almost every single uh, Wednesday and Sunday what it is to be a good Christian. We've seen her go through, and she's still standing. Paul Martin sings that song, I'm still standing. That's a good song for our apostle. After what she just went through the last six months, her daily one, her church family, her own family, stuff that we know, some stuff we don't know that she goes through. But we thank God for her today. Right now, just, just applaud our apostle right now. I love my apostle. Yeah, I love her. Thank God for her. Yeah, Cheryl, I know what you mean. You can't tell her no too many times. She got, she got me more than twice. And she still get me. It don't bother me, I can take it. See, when you can take corrective criticism, see, God will bless you. When you don't, that's pride. And God can't do nothing when you got pride. So I go home sometimes and say, how stupid was I? But then I look around the corner, God said, no, she right. And if you don't think she's right, then have a conversation. But don't be disrespectful. Because you ain't going to be disrespectful to me either. Family. So this is what believers are. We are from God and have overcome the world. John says the believes that we are only able to overcome the world because the one who is in them is greater than the one who is in the world. He is saying God is greater than the devil. This was our second chance. If Jesus said no, if Jesus said no, 40 miracles would not have happened. Okay, so I, there were some miracles. I'm talking about the ones in the Old Testament. I'm going to the New Testament. It says that the number amount of, 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 of miracles that was performed by Jesus First one was the water turned to the vine. Jesus heals a son in Capernaum. He drives out evil spirits. This is all what Jesus did. Yeah, that was a good one, apostle. He said, he heals Peter's mother-in-law. He cleans a man of leprosy. He heals a paralyzed man from the roof. He heals a, a, a woman with an issue of blood. He heals a, 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 a withered hand on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. What difference does it make when you heal somebody on the day of the week? He calms a raging sea. 
He heals two blind men. He heals a man with, uh, who's unable to speak. He feeds 5,000, Lady Antoinette. Then he turned around and feeds another 4,000 and the children. When he fed the 5,000, there was food left over for the disciples who were saying about what we're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Let's take care of them first because I got you. Jesus always has us. He heals the deaf man and the dumb man. He heals a, a man born blind. Uh, he heals a woman crippled for 18 years. He, 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 he cleanses 10 leopards. He raises Lazarus from the dead. He cleanses that baby a uh, boy unclean spirits. He has, he has protected us from the virus. Even some of us got the virus, but we didn't die. He, he protecting us today from gunshots. He protects us today from people abusing us. He texts us today from, from any type of unwanted uh, uh, vessels coming at us. Thank God for Jesus saying yes to God. We would be lost today without our God. He was, he's our world. He's our, he, 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 he heals us from our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. God, all those miracles he did. He did all that in three years he was down here. And we came to come to church and do something the right way. Taking us 20, 30 years to get from point A to point B, not C, B. We can't keep doing that. We got to step it up. This is the month at Destiny House Christian Center for the, the theme of release. We ought to be able to release and get it released out of ourselves and come out of this old stuff and come into the new. I thank God for the word today. We're asking God's blessing that he gave me that word to Release it in your atmosphere today. And if that word has touched your heart or any of our sermons, especially from our apostle and our prophet, we ask you that if you want to be a member of the Destiny House Christian Center, we used to have it to come on down, we'll give you the right hand of fellowship. But we can't do that anymore because of the CD, CD, D, CDC regulations but that doesn't make a difference because you can go online and put in the comments box at info at d-a-c-c dot church and a member of our ministry will get in touch with you and all you gotta do is say hey I want to be a member and somebody will get back in touch with you because what we do at Destiny House Christian Center we'll get you where you need to go writing on the word of God. So we thank you for joining us this morning. And I'm serious. If you want to be a member, just put in that box and come and join us. And we'll give you an hour and a half of good worship, good praise, good preaching. And we do have fun, you see. That's just me. <laughs> That's me and my personality. I just thank God that what he used in the regular world, that he uses spiritually now for me to do what I need to do to bring people to Christ. So we thank him this morning. We give God praise and glory. Amen. Amen. So this time now, we're going to have our offering lifted this morning. Our brother Chris is in front. I don't have my glasses on. Christian. I'm going to go Christian. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see. I can't see. That's wrong. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Before we leave out of here, let's all point our hands to Elder Dan. Father, we thank you for this word. Father God, we ask that you bless her. Father God, strengthen her body. Whatever virtue has gone out of the elder. Father God, we ask that you will, you will replenish it ten times and a hundred times fold in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that are giving, our giving ways are on your screen. You can give via Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, or Givelify. Or make, if you want to send in a check, make your account payable to Destiny House Christian Center. Amen. Make sure it's a check, not cash. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
If you need an envelope, the deacons are coming around for those that are in the physical church. Has everyone had the opportunity to give? Yes. Point your hand at the basket. Father, we thank you for this offering. We ask that you bless this offering. Father God, let this offering go to whatever you need in your house. Bless the giver. Father, we ask that you will bless those that were able to give and bless those that, that were not able to give, that they can give the next time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For those that would like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept that I am a sinner. I accept that you died on the cross, that you gave your son Jesus to die on the cross. I believe he got up in three days and that he's coming back again. And Father, I thank you and I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand to our feet as we're getting dismissed. Were you blessed this morning? I said, were you blessed this morning? Amen. Everybody lift up your hands before God. Father, we thank you because you put us on the wake-up list this morning. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And we tell you thank you. Father, we thank you for the move of God that was in this place. For your spirit was definitely here. Now, Father God, we ask for your travel and mercies, oh God, on the highways and the byways. Father God, we rebuke any drunk drivers. We rebuke anybody under the influence. Father God, we ask that you will protect us, oh God. Protect us going close. Protect us going far. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that this will be a blessed week. We ask that this will be a peaceful week, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for our leaders, and we ask that you continue to bless this church. In Jesus' holy and righteous name that we pray. Everybody clap your hands and say amen. God bless you, and we hope that you have a rest of your week, a good rest of your week. For worshiping with us today, Apostle Dr. Pepper Martin, Pastor-elect Sidney Martin, Pastor-elect Joseph Brown, and the entire DHCC Church family extends an open invitation for you to return. We look forward to seeing you again soon. May God bless you and continue to keep you in his care.